many scary things are hiding in the dark when you stand on the ship deck in the middle of the boundless ocean and stare into the night distance your imagination begins to draw terrible pictures but it's much worse when the horror isn't hidden and fear appears in the light under the rays of the bright sun when endless snow plains and giant icebergs start driving you mad such a horror happened more than 170 years ago to the crew members of two large ships, Erebus and Terror. On May 19, 1845, these two vessels went on a great voyage through Arctic waters to open the Northwest Passage, a route between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, passing through several icy bays of Canada. By then, both ships had gained fame after several successful expeditions in the Arctic region. Erebus and Terror were equipped with strong hulls that could withstand the pressure of polar icebergs. These were the first vessels of the British Royal Navy equipped with steam engines. Before their last expedition, engineers covered the boats with an extra iron layer to make them more ice-resistant. A lot of food, books, and coal were loaded into the cargo hold. The central stove and the sailors' cabins were connected by special air vents. Everyone was sure that an iceberg wouldn't run the ship through. Fuel and food supplies guaranteed that nobody would be hungry. In every way, those were the most equipped ships of that time for such expeditions. Erebus and Terror sailed from the English village of Greenhit with 128 crew members. The lead of the whole expedition was Sir John Franklin. Three months later, the ships were spotted in Baffin Bay, east of the entrance to the passage and this was the last time Europeans saw them. Three years later, in 1848, Captain Franklin's wife, Jane Franklin, and other caring people demanded to start an expedition to find the two vessels. The search continued for several years and didn't lead to anything that would reveal the secret of this terrible expedition. They didn't find the ships, but found strange clues that caused more questions than answers. So the first strange thing was the three graves found on Beachy Island, located in the Canadian Arctic archipelago. The crew set up a winter camp on the island shore, and for some reason, three out of 129 people passed away. Then the ship set off again and got in the trap. Probably Erebus and Terror got stuck in the ice near King William Island. In the middle of a snowy plain, surrounded by cold winds and ice, the crew began to experience serious problems. According to one theory, canned food contained a lot of lead. The sailors could get poisoned by that. And another view says that they got severely sick. Apparently, when the food supplies ran out, the crews went on foot to look for help, but got lost among the snowy plains. Another strange thing was a note on the shore of King William Island in the pocket of one of the crew members. Even now, no one can understand the contents of this paper. The letter had weird words and incoherent sentences, like, All my art, Tom, for I don't think for, or shall want some grog to wet our whistle. Many words were written backward, and some were smeared. Perhaps the note reveals a secret about the loss of the crew, but it's almost impossible to decipher it. Also, the search team found another note with more understandable records. One of them is dated May 1847. It said everything was fine and the expedition was going according to plan. Another record was made almost a year later, in April 1848. It said the ships got stuck in the ice and the crew left them. The sailors planned to go to the Back River, the Canadian River in the Northwest Territories. It was their last attempt to survive, which unfortunately ended up in failure. For more than 150 years, the fate of both ships remained a mystery. But then, in 2014, a search team found Erebus. The ship's wreckage was on the island a few feet from the water. Two years later, another expedition discovered terror on the seabed northwest of Erebus. However, these discoveries didn't help solve the mystery of the expedition, but added even more questions instead. Terror was located 60 miles south of the place where, according to the note, the ships were abandoned. Erebus was also in the wrong place. It's possible that the crew members left the vessel, wrote about it in a note, but then returned and sailed on. Another version says that the moving ice could move the boats. 
In any case, we won't know what happened to the expedition. Some associate this tragedy with mystical forces. You can see this version in TV series based on these tragic events. But most likely, the crew members found themselves in an ice trap they couldn't escape. Another famous case of the vanishing of sailors happened to the ship Mary Celeste. It was built in Canada in 1861 and named Amazon. It gained notoriety right from the very first voyages of the ship. The ship changed several captains and crashed into the rocks. The broken vessel was resold a few times before receiving repairs. After the upgrade, it got a new name, Mary Celeste, and a new captain, Benjamin Briggs. He was a brave, experienced sailor with a kind heart and high moral qualities. In November 1872, with 10 people on board, Mary Celeste sailed from New York to Italy with a valuable cargo on board. A few days later, another ship, De Gracia, followed it along the same route from the port in New York. Somewhere between the Azores, the captain of the De Gracia, David Morehouse, noticed a ship six miles away that was sailing too strangely. It swayed from the side like no one was holding the steering wheel. David came closer and tried to contact the people on board, but there was no response. At that moment, the captain realized that it was Mary Celeste. Together with the crew members, they climbed aboard and found that its sails were slightly torn. There was water in the hold, but it could easily be pumped out. The crew's belongings were in the cabins, and the cargo was untouched. Only one lifeboat and a chronometer, which is a navigation device, were missing. The last record in the logbook said the voyage was going according to plan. Apart from the slightly damaged sails, the vessel was in perfect condition. But something forced all the crew members to leave it. Several members of the De Gracia crew remained on board the Mary Celeste to deliver it to the nearest seaport. One of the versions said that the water pump in the hold could be filled with coal. Before the last trip, Mary Celeste transported a large amount of this material and some of it could have stuck inside the pump. When the ship got into a storm, the hold flooded a little, and Captain Briggs couldn't understand how critical the situation was. There were too many barrels, so he couldn't determine the water level. It was dangerous to stay on board since the ship could sink. Therefore, the captain decided to evacuate by lifeboat. Perhaps they were close to land, and Briggs decided to sail in that direction but the storm got stronger and sank the boat. Another version says the De Gracia attacked Mary Celeste and got rid of its crew to get the cargo. The court couldn't prove this, but the reputation of Captain David Morehouse was damaged, and he had difficulty finding a job after that. The story of Mary Celeste became world famous, so people created many different versions. Of course, someone claimed that something mystical had happened to the ship, But such theories have no evidence. There are so many records and documents on the internet about this case, so anyone can try to sort out the truth from the fiction. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.